Okay, testing. One, two, three. Are we live? Are we live? Hello, chat. How's it going? Did you have a good day? I had an amazing day. I, I went out. I touched grass. Um, I, I don't know why so many people on Twitter ask me to touch grass. E every single time I show them a female character from the 90s or the early 2000s or an anime girl, they're immediately going like, oh my god, touch grass, touch grass. Uh, a lot of pronoun pushers as well. A, lo a lot of individuals with flags, uh, flag humpers in the bio, they're, they're obsessed with me touching grass. They don't want me to be on Twitter because I'm ruining their little plan, their little machinations in order to uh, change the culture, right? To change society by changing the culture. Uh, for those of you that follow me on Twitter, you would see what I mean. Uh, like for instance, uh, I, I like I like trolling. I like doing a little bit of trolling, if you, if you could imagine that. Uh, and, and this is like one of the things that I have retweeted and, and it really, really upset them. Um, apparently this, right? Like this is a picture of the new Fallout poster. And uh, I, I retweeted this from game character AI. They're absolutely enraged, uh, okay? Like if you can imagine a red bull and you show it, sorry, a bull and you show it the color red. And be like, it's kind of like that on Twitter. Like these individuals are furious. They they're on a stampede. Uh, they they just you know like they, they don't like the female form. It is what it is. It it enrages them. Like uh, the level of misogyny that that it is on the bowels of Twitter from the left um, is of levels of astonishment that even 4chan is jealous. Like I'm willing to bet if if you were to have a time machine and go back like 10 years ago and show the misogynismus to 4chan. They would be like, how can how can we do that? Like, really? Like, like, like anything? Like any female feature is enough to trigger them? The answer is yes. Yes, like what they want is to pump the testosterone. Like if you have the testosterone and you pump it into the female character, that is progressive. That is what America desires and covets, like the spice melange. Anyway, I talk too much. I need to give a little bit of attention to the chat as well. Um, just mod the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually consider it a fetish. Again, like, America has uh, progressed. They evolved. Uh, humanity has evolved through the power of hormones, I guess, to the point where uh, they're looking at the rest of the world as if we're different species. Uh, and they consider the male gaze, in other words, the, the heteronormativity, they consider it to be a fetish now. Like, if you're a man and you like a woman, you are obsessed with porn, uh, you need to go touch grass, uh, you're evil incarnate, all the other shit... Uh, liking boobs, liking gases, that's not acceptable. Now, now, if you like the Californian mental illness haircut, that that is what what normal people like. Furriness as well, that, that is considered normal. Everything else is deviant. Uh, <laughs> where's the mod that makes the jetpack scenes less cringe? Motherfucker, I, I do not watch the Fallout TV show. I, I saw the trailer, uh, and usually the trailer is what's considered to be the best foot forward, right? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> their best foot forward looked like two left feet to me, so I, I'm not going to watch that. It was so fucking cringe. I'm not even hate watching. Look, all I'm saying is that Americans have finally, in the year 2024, discovered the best anti-piracy system on the internet. Like, you guys may have thought that is the nouveau. You, you may have thought that, like, they'll, you know, maybe they're going to come up, like, maybe some AI shit, like, some quantum mechanics that makes the anti-piracy software. No, no, no. Netflix and Amazon have now created the TV shows that are unpiratable. I wouldn't watch them for free, chat. Like, like even, even if you gave them to me for free and I have to download them on my computer to watch, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. So, henceforth, it's probably the least pirated shows in human history. No, no, what? Like, even for free, you, you would have to pay me money. I mean, it's actually, no, you know what? Fuck it. It literally has come to this. My friend, Short Fat Otaku, had to be paid $400 so he can watch Halo. Like, like this is the absolute state of American entertainment where you have to pay people to watch the garbage. I, I, I never thought it would be possible, but, well, here it is. I mean, seriously, can you guys make something so bad <clears throat> that, that people need to be paid? I would rather watch Pain Dry. I, I would rather watch Pain Dry because that is probably more relaxing than watching any Amazon or Wolf shows that are coming from Netflix. It's... Uh, no. 
In fact, I would sue you for mental to torture. You know, like, this is the way you can discipline uh, children nowadays. Uh, I, I grew up with communism, right? Like a strong ideology in the Soviet Union. And uh, my parents, whenever I did something, whenever I misbehaved, they would apply a whoop. It was called applying a correction. Um, now, now, apparently, you're not allowed to do that. You can't, you can't spank your kid. You can't educate them like that. Uh, so I would suggest different forms of education. Make them watch a Netflix movie. Right? Like your kid misbehaves. Uh, two hours of Lord, uh, sorry, uh, rings of power plus privilege. Two hours. More than that is inhumane. And you're going to see your kid behaving. You know, you, you force him to watch a medical slop a couple of days a week. And then he's going to be like, okay, mommy, I, I'm going to get good grades at school. I'm, I'm going to be a doctor now. Please just, just stop making me watch these American garbage shows. Uh, Zlixia Doppelganger for $2 says, uh, these people did some Islamic cuddles. That, that actually, uh, th there was something interesting which transpired. Let me, let me see if I can find the article. <clears throat> uh, it happened in France. So, there was this, this activist in France. There we go. Left-wing politician who campaigned for mass migration, uh, brutally beaten by North African men in France. Uh, so this was in the news today. I found it interesting. I was like, okay, well, that, that happened. Uh, did she change her views? The answer is no. Uh, in a way, I can understand why she wouldn't change her views because, uh, I mean, if you're a politician, it's a really comfortable job. You know, you're, you're gorging off the taxpayer money. Uh, you, you make a lot of cash, you know, cause, cause you're a politician, you make legislation, but, uh, Hey, you got you got to maintain your ideology, right? I mean, if you say anything negative, uh, you can get ostracized, kicked from the party. Your friends can leave you. Like, like, what can you do? So uh, it is what it is. It's uh, it's. Just, I, I I wonder if she personally changed her views, but even if she did, I don't think she would uh, express them. Uh, I thought that was from last year. Hold on, let me check uh, the date. <clears throat> Because uh, I, I get a lot of my news from subscribers, and usually I assume that they are indeed uh, recent events, but every now and then uh, it, it does happen that someone gives me something from last year. Uh, no, this one is not carbon dated, so it's it's from Twitter, from uh, from an account that usually posts these types of news, but uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know if it's recent or not. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if it's recent or not because it did happen. And I don't think it's uh, relevant if it happened yesterday or last year. It's it's still... <clears throat> uh, Zlixia says, good. Uh, it's doubling down. Uh, well, it is what it is. I mean, again, it, look, if you manage to become an activist, right? Like, like for instance, if uh, <clears throat> you're doing activism... And then you get uh, disillusioned with your ideology. I mean, you got two choices. Number one, you stop doing that. And all of a sudden, you don't get any money. You don't uh, have a job. You don't have anything. Or, or number two, you, you swallow your pride and you continue doing what you've been doing. A.K.A. grifting. Ideologically motivated people don't change their minds very easily. Yeah, but usually when you go through a traumatic event... It can, it can change a person's worldview. So so that can happen. Like, like for instance, uh, I actually do know a person that was uh, a, a Pfizer enthusiast. Let's call it like that. A, a Pfizer enthusiast. The person that was worshipping the Pfizer Cathedral. And uh, they, they actually suffered some uh, nasty side effects. And after they suffered the side effects, they weren't as big on the Pfizer communion as they used to be. So, no, like, there, there are situations where people uh, do change their ideology. They do change their opinion. And that can happen, but again, <clears throat> in, in the case of a person that is actually paid in order to spew certain uh, ideas, it's a lot more difficult to tell, because if you stop spewing those ideas, then um, he's not going to receive uh, the same payment and benefits. Uh, th there was like, oh yeah, 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 no, like the, the one that you guys say happened a couple of years ago. This was, um, a no border activist back in 2016 and he got butfuked. He got butfuked by, uh, one of the migrants from Sweden. And after he got butfuked, he actually filed a complaint 
uh, to the judges, right? Like he reported the migrant, and uh, then then he posted on social media saying that he is actually devastated and very sad that the migrant has to be deported back to his country of origin. And I was thinking, like, is this like legitimately what he believes? Because if you genuinely believe that, then why file the complaint? You know, it's it's not rape unless you don't consent. So you can always say that you actually wanted to get butfuket. Uh, but in his situation, he did file the report, which means that he was probably saying the stuff that he was saying in order to maintain his job, career, and alleged reputation. Um, <clears throat> Zlixian, the people need to subject the politician to the worst treatment that the migrants have inflicted upon them. Uh, well, it's, it's not that. I, I think, like, politicians, uh, should live in diverse areas. Like, it, it, you know, diversity is our strength. Uh, except around Brussels. Like, Brussels is very uh, non-diverse. And I, I think, uh, you know, it, it would be nice if it would change. I, I think, like, the politicians should have everything that they advocate for happening in their backyard as well. Because they are good leaders, right? Like, a leader uh, leads by example. So, you know, if diversity is our strength, I wanted to give it to the politicians first and foremost. Um... Hold on, let me, let me just uh, give my uh, link to the stream to someone else. That, that has asked for it, and here we go. <clears throat> um, that darn kitty, welcome to the show. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy the stream. Anyway, uh, let's uh, listen to a very interesting interview. Well, well actually, no, hold on. Uh, first, I want to um, listen to this bizarre thing. Hold on. This is a American late night comedy, right? Allegedly. And uh, you got you got this comedian talking about how his dog died, and I'm like, what? Well, what the fuck is so funny about that? But yeah, this is th this is why I'm competing with. This is the the American late night comedian. Anyway, right. Uh, th this one was interesting, right? So it was uh, filmed 16 years ago. <clears throat> like, this is probably, at, like, at the beginnings of YouTube. And, uh, it's got comments disabled. I don't know why. But literally everything that, that happens here, like, everything that he's going to be discussing is something that already took place in the gaming industry. So let's listen to it. That did happen during the 60s was some music of an unusual or experimental nature did, did get recorded and did get released. Now look at who the executives were in those companies at those times. Not hip young guys. These were cigar chomping old guys who looked at the product that came and said, I don't know. Who knows what it is? Record it, stick it out of it. So, all right. We were better off with those guys than we are now with the supposedly hip young executives, you know, who are making the decisions of what people should see and hear in the marketplace. These, the young guys are more conservative and more dangerous to the art form than the old guys with the cigars ever were. And you know how these young guys got in there? The old guy with a cigar, one day he goes, ah, well, I took a chance, it went out, and we sold a few million units. All right, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Well, we got to do more of it. I need some advice. Let's get a hippie in here. So they hire a hippie. They're bringing the guy with the long hair. Now, they're not going to trust him to do anything except carry coffee and bring the mail in and out. He starts in there. Let's carry the coffee. Well, we can trust him. He brought the coffee four times on time. Let's give him a real job. OK, he becomes an A&R man. From there, you know, moving up and up and up. Next thing you know, he's got his feet on the desk. And he's saying, well, we can't take a chance on this because it's just simply, that's not what the kids really want, and I, and I know. You know. And they got that attitude. And the day you get rid of that attitude and get back to, who knows? Take a chance, you know, that, that entrepreneurial spirit where even if you don't like or understand what the record is that's coming in the door, the person who is in the executive chair may not be the final arbiter of taste of the entire population. So, so this, when I heard it, I was like mind blown. I, I mean, okay, they're describing what, what literally is happening now with the activists. The difference is that at least the hippie in his time was actually tasked with getting coffee four times before he would get promoted. 
Nowadays, I, I, I remember like Zoe Quinn, right? Like, like she never tweeted about a single comic book in her life. But all of a sudden gets hired by DC Comics. And is she like hired like in a small position? No, she gets a flagship comic. Like, they, they are picked up through nepotism, through cronyism, and they are placed in positions of power at these established IPs. And, and all of a sudden, of course, they're not going to perform, right? Like they, her comic tanked, and then she gets placed on another comic, right? Like they, they're failing upwards. And, and what I noticed is, like, this guy is talking about, yeah, there were, like, various musics and sounds that, that <clears throat> were, were quite new and never before heard, and they took a chance with them. I'm thinking, like, in the music industry, when's the last new genre of music that came out? I think, like, the last one was dubstep, right? But, but like, either than that, like, you, you just do not have new genres of music. Like, the, innov uh, the innovation has suddenly stopped. I mean, you're looking throughout the, the decades, and you notice, okay, well, people like jazz, and then they created rock, and then they created heavy metal, and... You know, they, they created trash metal where they have, like, Metallica with an orchestra and they're, they're singing with their electric guitars and they're creating something new. Even the fucking dubstep, a lot of people hate it. I, I didn't particularly like it either, but it was, like, something new at least. It was a new style. It was, And you look at video games and it's the same stuff, right? Like, video games of old, you, you had, like, the first ever strategy game and people are like, wow, this is so cool. And you had like, oh, look, this uh, game like called uh, Myth. Uh, Myth has formation battles, and it's interesting. And now you got point-and-click adventures. And wow, first-person shooters, you know, they're they're really amazing. But like every game had like something new, new gameplay, new new structure, new stuff. Nowadays, everything is the same shit. Everything is the same garbage like that you've already played ten times over. Not no originality, nothing. The only original thing is how to milk you of money. Oh, that, that, what, what if what if we charge the game at $120 and allow people to play three days earlier? What, what if we, you know, uh, make it online only and uh, even if it's a single player game and, and, and we sell like uh, the season pass or some shit? It's like, th that is where the creativity is at, like how to milk you of cash while selling you a game at $110 or $120. But I don't know that, like, everything is stale. And you have, like, these absolute fucking morons, the, these twats that go, like, oh, well, the market wouldn't want this. Oh, no, no, no. Like, the the, the, the modern audience, the modern audience, like, shut the fuck up. And, and when they see a game that actually the modern audience does, like, like Stellar Blade, chat, fucking hell, like, Stellar Blade, 300,000 people played the demo. 300,000 people. We're talking about a PlayStation exclusive, right? If this was on PC, there would have been millions of people playing the demo. Stellar Blade is going to be game of the year, much to the horror and dismay of these chuckle fucks. And, and, and they're the ones that, oh no, we're in touch, we're in touch with the audience. Yeah, yeah the, the audience you're telling to go touch grass rather than play your video games. I, I, I just... I gotta say, I, I was like really bewildered by seeing literally the history of, of modern video gaming just repeating itself um, when, when you understand like what, what actually happened in the past with the music industry. It's just it's so fucking bizarre. Um, <clears throat> FDR, thank you for the uh, Romanian uh, live stream memberships. I appreciate it. Uh, who are your favorite bands? I, I don't even think I have favorite bands. Like, nothing in the West right now is producing any type of entertainment that I like. If it's me listening to bands, I listen to video game opening soundtracks. Like, recently I was listening to Nike's opening soundtrack. Uh, like, Nike's got, like, really great music. And Stellar Blade, actually. Holy shit, like, Stellar Blade has great music. I, I, I have been reduced to having to listen to opening soundtrack from games... Uh, I'm also listening to Godsmack, like, like you know, maybe I'm becoming old and I gotta listen to music from my old age. I, I don't fucking know what it is, but it's just, I, I can't think of anything good that, that came out recently. And, and then you listen to, like, Japanese shit. I, I like listening to Japanese shit a lot. But nothing from America. Like, what is it from America that's worth listening to? Stellar Blade must come to PC. Um, I, I think 
chances are that it will definitely come to PC. You just need one year or so. Um, they, they don't really make exclusive deals. Uh, unless, you know, if Sony is smart, uh, they, they could probably pay Stellar Blade a lot more cash so that they, they don't go to PC. Like, that's what I would do. Because if you're looking at uh, the consoles right now, there aren't many exclusives. Like, there's literally no reason why you'd want to buy a PlayStation. Well, actually, no. You know what? I, I can think of two reasons why you'd want a PlayStation. Uh, number one, <clears throat> if you have a girlfriend, right? So, like, if you have a girlfriend, there are certain games that you can play on a couch. You can play uh, Tangled or... or the, the, there, there's, like, a couple of games that have, like... Uh, the ability for you to play with her. But but even then, you might as well just buy a Switch, right? Like, buy a Nintendo, because those have exclusives. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you can also buy a PlayStation, because the VR is cheap. So so the virtual reality for the PlayStation is is actually cheaper than the ones for a computer. Uh, but but that, that's, like, the only two reasons. And, of course, the third reason would be Stellar Blade. Um... But, but, you know, you can hook up your PC to, to a big computer screen. So, yeah, I, I, I do not see any reason why you'd ever want to buy a PlayStation right now. Unless they manage to get Stellar Blade to be permanently exclusive. So, so if, they, if they can pay the developers uh, huge stacks of cash, then, then maybe. Um... Remember all those videos where the girlfriend threw the PlayStation out of a window? Yeah, I mean, when I grew up, you know, the narrative right now is that uh, misogynismus. So misogynismus is what uh, kept the women from playing video games. Like, women always wanted to play video games. They, 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 always, they always wanted to play video games, but those damn jacks, you know, those, those damn frat boys, they would be like, no women allowed. And, and only through Anita Sarkeesian did women manage to break the glass ceiling, okay? That, that's the narrative. That, that is what allegedly happened. But I lived through those times, and I can tell you that is a conspiracy theory. What actually did happen is that gaming was considered to be immature. Like, women would come to you, and they would be like, why are you still playing video games? Games are for children, you know? Go, go watch sports. Go, uh, go, watch sp go drive cars. Go do manly stuff, right? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> they, they really considered gaming to be something immature, and on top of that, a lot of women were upset whenever their boyfriends would ignore them because of their gaming addiction. So, so you'd have, like, this guy that was playing games most of the time, and, you know, the woman would walk up naked in front of him, and he wouldn't give a shit, it's like, move out of the way, let me see the game. Uh, and it's usually because they were playing online games and MMOs, which were very addictive. And this really infuriated women because it's like, oh my god, I'm not into the center of attention? Oh, like, how can I not be in the center of attention? I, I need to be in the center of the universe. Uh, so, so they would get upset and they would throw the PlayStation. <laughs> and then they would be shocked when the boyfriend would uh, break up with them. So, yeah. The only video game I ever see uh, jocks play was FIFA. Uh, at the time, jocks, yeah, weren't really playing video games. Um, they, and I, I did see a lot of jocks playing racing games, though. Uh, not, not necessarily FIFA. But there was, like, yeah, like, there was definitely a, a type of men that, that played FIFA. Like, uh, it, it, it was... Um, I don't know how to say, douchebags, I guess, would be the translation that, that would play FIFA, at least when I was a kid. Let's see Zappa predicting uh, 2020. Hold on, because I just saw this into the uh, recommended videos. It's time for a revolution, but probably not in the terms that people imagine it. The word seems to conjure up images of sort of a modern-day version of peasants going into the street with their pitchforks to go after the bad guy who lives in a big house someplace in a hill and we're going to get that son of a bitch and we'll take all the stuff away from him and we'll give it to the workers, you know. And that's not the kind of revolution I had in mind. Which one had you in mind? Well, I thought that it might be nice if, uh, if it was handled in a little bit more modern, efficient way, you know, without people getting slaughtered in the street. It's a matter of infiltration. What kind of infiltration? Because the thing that's wrong today is that the, the people who are in control of the media and the government and, you know, things that 
that run the lives of the average person in the street, they aren't doing a good job of it because they don't really care. And so if you just replace them, and I think that's a possibility. By whom? By interested people from the younger generation. Uh, you think they are more interested in the older ones? You think it's, it's a, a matter of uh, age? Uh, I think the potential is there in the younger generation. I don't think that right now they are really interested. Their political involvement is on a very superficial basis. You know, they're still for the, they go out for the social uh, aspects of a march or a rally rather than for the uh, what it could possibly accomplish. And I don't think that demonstrations are uh, the best possible tactic. What do you think of the present situation here in the States, I mean, politically? Well, it's a little frightening at times. I'm still optimistic about it. Because America is such a crazy place. I mean, it's when you consider that you can elect a person like Richard Nixon just by running the proper type of television advertising campaign, it's possible that a person with an equal amount of money for the same size campaign, he spent $22 million to convince a bunch of people to vote for him, that he was a good bet for the presidency. Anybody else with $22 million in the right kind of PR firm could do the same thing. I know you around for president. I'd thought about it a number of times before, and then the thing that always holds me back is that what would it feel like to actually be the president, you know, and have to stay in Washington, D.C., in that house for four years? That'd be pretty grim. I saw already some stickers, Frank Zappa for president. I haven't seen any stickers. I've seen some little cards that somebody printed up. I didn't have anything to do with them. But it's true. I had thought about it. I've thought about politics a number of times. But you can't do it all just from the presidency. The president doesn't have the absolute control in the United States because you have to. the power is divided up between him and the, the Senate and the Congress and the rest of that crap. And if you go in there and you can't work in conjunction with the people who are in the Senate and the Congress, you can't get anything done. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that this is like him predicting 2020. I, I, I think it's just saying a lot of vague shit. And, uh, I, I mean, nothing that he said was insightful. It's like, well, yeah, America is not a dictatorship, but you got to work with, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, I, I don't know why people are like, oh, wow, he, he's so insightful. It's like, look, look what he is saying. It's a clickbait title, yeah. It's it's not, it's not something, um, I, I expected something better. I, I did, I did, but yeah. Uh, with, with the music industry, he was spot on, but with American politics, not so much. It's like, oh, well, we, we just need, uh, like, I'm expecting... A communist revolution, like people, no, sorry, people are expecting a communist revolution, but like what they're going to get is like the people in charge are going to be replaced with the younger generation. It's like, well, yeah, but that happens all the time, you know, like the young people, they, they're going to replace the old. <laughs> I mean, it's normal. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Are politicians ever useful for anything? Uh, for taking bribes, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I'm really disenfranchised with modern politicians. Like I, I generally don't know if it was always the case or if we're watching something new. Um, but um, the, the, the whole thing is that you're looking at politicians and they're mostly like actors, especially the American ones. Like, like and what I mean by this is that they're going up on a podium. Uh, they're reading from a prompter. And usually, you know, when they're asked questions, like, at least with Joe Biden, there have been times when people have said that, like, yeah, we, we practice the questions beforehand, right? So, so, like, he knows who's going to ask him what. He knows what the response is going to be beforehand. So, like, everything is rehearsed. And, like, what, what, what is the actual passion? What, what is the, the, the natural thing? It's, it's, everything is plastic. Everything is, like, going and doing the motions. And it's not just Joe Biden, it's like most politicians. And you, what, what you notice, and this is frightening in my opinion, they don't even have debates anymore. <clears throat> like the only time you have left-wing and right-wing debates in the United States is during the presidential elections. And, and last time, like even those weren't sure if they're going to happen. 
So, so like, you, you get, like, the, the presidential elections and you get your debates there. And you also have, like, the debates before uh, the primaries where, where the Democrats are basically trying to outleft each other and talk in Spanish without really understanding the language. Uh, and then you have, like, the Republicans also having the debates and explaining why, why they're better than Trump. And then, like, finally, you got you got the actual debates, you know, the, the, the ones between the Democrats and the Republicans and uh, the, the presidential ones are shit-flinging contests. And then the vice president ones are, are the ones that genuinely don't get that much audience, but they actually do talk some economy over there. And that's it. That's fucking it. Politicians can't debate. They can't articulate their side of the story. They're definitely not as charismatic. All, all they do is they read from a prompter, and, and they do seem to be more like actors. Anyhow. Politicians are too easily tempted to enrich themselves. Well, it's it's more like... I, I genuinely don't even know if politicians can go haywire, at least here in Eastern Europe, if you have a politician that becomes a loose cannonball and, and they're basically, you know, realizing, hold on a little bit, like, I'm actually elected and I can do whatever I want. All of a sudden... Oh, look what we found five years ago. He committed some crime. Oh, look, uh, there, there's a leak into the press, some chat logs that he had, which were very problematic. And, and it's, it's almost like, okay, so like if you're a politician, the moment you decide to uh, actually do the stuff that you want to do, you notice that everyone is coming after you. Like, like, look with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a perfect example, right? Like when he wasn't a politician... He's beloved by everyone. Everyone likes him. You know, he's the guy. He's the entertainer. And he was uh, on that show, The Apprentice. And the moment, the very fucking moment that he decides to go president, oh my god, he's a misogynistic pig. He, he is awful. He, he's going to start World War III. He's insurrectionist. Oh, look, look what he did. Oh, he wanted to grab her by the pussy. Oh, the horror, the humanity. It's, it's, it's kind of what happens with politicians as well. The moment they, they step out of line, the, the same treatment they're getting. Uh, that's why they required them to commit certain acts as insurance. Yeah, that, that, that is a tried and true tactic that has worked in the Soviet Union as well. Like, usually... You, you want someone as a politician that's either corrupt or has committed crimes so that you can have a leash on them. And they know that, look, if you ever step out of line, we can always just make your crimes be available for the press. Fortune did January say No, it was parlor. It was parlor. I mean, look, perfect example as well, right? January 6th, from, from what we know now, was primarily coordinated on Facebook. Uh, but, but apparently, they accused Parler of doing it, and they shut down Parler. And then Parler never recovered after that. So, you know, it goes to show why, because Facebook plays ball. Anyway, um, let's talk about something else that's interesting. Uh, speaking of the gaming industry, right? Like, like this is the division. The division, a game that no one fucking knows anymore. Like, even if you could play it, even if you could install it right now, would you? Would you fucking really? It's not a video game that I'm, I'm looking back and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I, I wish I could replay uh, the Division was, like, an interesting game, I guess, because of the graphics. Like, when it was first announced, it, it had, like, mind-blowing graphics, and it looked great. But then when you actually got it, and you actually played it, you realize that they lied to you in the trailer. They literally lied to you. Uh, the Division didn't have those amazing graphics. <clears throat> the story wasn't even that good. And it was very repetitive. Like, the gameplay loop was boring as fuck, right? Uh, but hey, you know, like, lucky because of the division, we get to listen what activists have to say, right? Like, like you would never have heard these buzzwords about the emotional labor 
You, you would never have heard about it if it wasn't for the division. Right. Uh, meanwhile, this is the creator of Azure Lane. Notice how she's making more money than the division. Uh, and not only that, but like she doesn't have any activism either. Like, like this is completely normal. It's like, it, also, like what, what I love the most, the difference between these two, is that this one, like the game is in the background. The game is like, oh yeah, by the way, we got the game, right? Like there, there is some game, eh, maybe it exists. But what do you have in the forefront? You got the activist message, right? You got the, the person with a resting bitch face looking at you. Like she's not happy. She's not excited to have you as a customer. Uh, she She's not happy to be there. Like she just wants you to know. She wants you to be lectured. This looks like a Catholic nun at a school giving you the seminar, right? And this is the American version. Meanwhile, what do we have here? Well, you got the fucking CEO of a multi-billion dollar corporation, and she's, she's happy, she's excited, she wants you as a customer, she's showing you her work, she made this, right? Like, she created that fucking anime girl that is next to her, and she wants you to partake into the joy and the entertainment that she made, right? So, like, <clears throat> night and day difference, night and day. And by the way, now that I've noticed, this is not even the first division, this looks like the, the second one, Division 2, that no one genuinely remembers. Like, this is a video game that came and went, like, I, the, the, it, it, I, I think, like, people talked about it for, like, maybe one day or so, and then it just went away, and it was never mentioned ever again. Uh, but meanwhile, this, people talk about it today. It still exists, right? Not, not as good as DK, but it's still, like, Azure Lane is a game that people get on phones. Now, what, what I also noticed, and this is what I don't get, why is it that games like this have such a bad reputation, right? Because uh, here's the thing, like, this game is free to play. If you don't put the credit card in, you can play it for free. Meanwhile, these games, not only do they cost around, like, $70 in order to buy, probably more nowadays, right? Uh, but you also have, like, day one DLC, you got uh, the, the company making you agree to TOS where they harvest information from you and they sell it to third parties, and uh, it's, like, all of this nonsense... That, that, that comes with the package. Why, why is this like held in more prestige than this? I genuinely don't get. Maybe maybe one day I'll be told. But up until that day. Uh... Yeah, you get loot box. Uh, like the thing is, like loot boxes. If I remember, like the division had loot boxes as well. I may be wrong, but I I, I remember. I, I know Overwatch had loot boxes. Um, I would have to check if the division had it. Uh, what constitutes emotional labor? Putting everything out of your heart and mind until you're a sloppy idol. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's also, like, a, a, a thing that the Americans invented. Like, I, I don't even know if this has, like, any Romanian translation. I mean, yeah, you can say, like, uh, but, it, but it sounds, like, so alien, so foreign to my language. It's, like, emotional labor. Like, we're talking about emotional labor while people are breaking their backs in construction. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you on about? Emotional labor. It's like shit that you can't prove that happened, but oh, you're so emotional. Oh, right. Toughen up, Buttercup. What can I say? They, the, these people working in air conditioning in a first world country, whining and complaining about emotions. Uh, all right. I think they have pills for that. Uh, phone games are seen as a lesser than PC console games. Uh, you know, I would agree that phone games are lesser than PC and console games if the year was 2016. Like, back then, sure. You know, back then, like, an actual video game was was way better than a phone game. But in 2024, the standard of the AAA industry is so fucking low, chat. It, it is so unbelievably low that, yes, like, phone games, I would say, actually care about the customer. Like, no, seriously, I actually feel represented by the people who make these phone games, then I feel represented by the people who make the AAA shit. 
Uh, gachas are hated because it's uh, it's known they are paid to win, but people tend to forget that modern AAA games are also paid to win, also high V. Uh, thank you, Danny. Well, yeah, like let's let's discuss this a little bit because this is an interesting thing, right? So like, phone games are paid to win. I I haven't spent a dollar in in Nikkei now. It's the only phone game that I'm playing, so I don't know. Like maybe the others are bad. But this one is isn't really bad, right? Uh, and I haven't spent anything, and I'm almost close to the end game. I, I I'm I'm reaching the 160 wall, and I, I'm close to to breaking it. And after that, I, I think like in one or two months, I, I can be close to the to the end game. Um, but uh, I haven't paid anything for it, right? Now now let's look at triple A. Let's look at the. Uh, Manja Industrial Complex and what they are doing. So hold on, I made a video on my secondary channel and maybe I can. Uh... Okay, right. Let's, uh, let's go past the commercials and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here we go. A hundred and twenty fucking dollars. It's like a meal at McDonald's, isn't it? A hundred and twenty dollars. Fuck me. A hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Sorry, a hundred and thirty, right? A hundred and thirty fucking dollars. I I would be surprised if it's got more than ten hours of gameplay. A hundred and thirty dollars. With a hundred and thirty dollars, I'm willing to bet you can get almost every single waifu in Nikkei if you, if you know how to invest the money. <laughs> Probably not, but but still, a hundred and thirty bucks. A hundred and thirty bucks. What do you get? Well, you get the uh, three days early access. Look what they're doing, right? If you want to play three days early, you gotta cough up extra money. So like the the original game, the original game. If if you're a cheap, the, if you're a peasant. Right for the peasants, seventy dollars. But if you want to play three days earlier, a hundred and ten. Forty extra bucks. Forty extra bucks, and they're banking on the fact that they know that gamers have no impulse control. They they will give you um, the season pass for a single player fucking game chat. A single player game now has a season pass. Fuck off. And then, you, from what I understand, there's people saying that there are missions that are locked that you can get in the Ultimate Edition. I think it's the Rogue Infiltrated Bundle. I, I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but um, who knows? Digital art book. Yeah, sure. I mean, the game looks like this, right? Why Why would I want... Sorry. Why, why would I want the digital art book for this? Do, do you want me to wipe my ass with it? Like, what is the purpose of getting a digital art book when the game looks like this? If you give me the digital art book that looks like this, then yeah, but like this? And, and this is what I've been saying, you know, like gacha games and shit like that, like Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade, it makes action figurines. Like, I saw an action figurine of Eve. It's sold out. Like, people buy that stuff. But... When, when your female characters look like this, no one wants this on a t-shirt. No one wants this to display anywhere near them. So they, they got to do this. They, they got to do this shit in order to recover their losses. And they also have like an army of diversity officers. And the diversity officers, you know, they, they need their hormone therapy. That's expensive. So like they, they require a lot of money to hire. And, and they need to justify, oh, $130 for a fucking game. Like I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry, Chad. I, I, I was with you. I, I was like, yeah, phone games are shit. You know, don't get phone game. But, but this is the AAA now. This is the AAA now. So I'm now going with the phone games. I literally have to install a phone game on my, on my PC in order to get some enjoyment. I'll probably do a let's play of it eventually. But, what, what can I do? You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, why would people play the division on PC or console when the New York live server is zero lag with 4K graphics and max difficulty? I don't know. Why would people play the division at all? And by the way, you know, I, um, <clears throat> I, I also want to say I was arguing with Dev, but maybe he has a point. <laughs> uh, 
it's it's not just the fact that these people are ideologically possessed and the moment they see a beautiful and attractive woman they gotta give her the man job but look at the hair man the, the hair looks like she's got a mop like I, I actually talked with um <clears throat> with, with dev about this and i was contradicting him it's like well you know the uh the people that work there, they're, they're still talented. No, they're not. I mean, I'm looking at the eyes. The eyes look soulless. And, and then you have, like, the hair. The hair looks like a mop. It, it looks so fucking lifeless. Jesus Christ. That Like, you could, you could actually go to games that were made three or four years ago, and they looked better. I, I, I would say this, though. Like, the ideology is still the worst factor. Because even if you were to have a talented artist, even if you have someone that actually knew how to do hair properly and how to model characters properly, they wouldn't be allowed. Like, the HR lady would get them fired. They, they would tell them, no, you're embarrassing everyone else. You need to be equal. We need, we need equality here. And equality means the lowest common denominator. What a fucking embarrassment. It looks like she's got a lips. Uh, incompetence by design is malice. They fire competent people to replace them with incompetent stooges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, like, some of the people that work at these studios, they, they still have uh, competency. But um, it, it, it's just the fact that they're not allowed. They're, 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 unless you're drawing men, right? Like, if you're drawing buffed men, if you're into drawing Kratos, then you can have a... Nice career at one of these studios, but either the dad no. And, and by the way, you know, uh, I was talking with the guy that works at Ubisoft, um, middle management, and and I was basically telling him that this was at the beginning of the VTubers, right? Uh, it, it was like just getting starting the trend. Like Gargura just released, and I was like, look, Ubisoft as a company. If you guys can make some VTubers, like, you got, you got the technology, you got the artists. It's not that expensive. If you make some VTubers, and they're popular, uh, then you can actually promote your games, right? So, like, if you have, like, a couple of waifu VTubers that may manage to get, like, a million uh, views or whatever, then you don't need the game journalists. You can just literally get those girls to promote your games. And, uh, you know, he, he thought about it, uh, took that information to his higher-ups, and there were two problems. The first problem was that they don't have female characters. Like, Ubisoft, despite all of the diversity, despite all of this shit, they do not have their own Lara Croft, they do not have their Bayonetta, they do not have their Tracer. They genuinely do not have any characters. Like, like an entire fucking company, they do not have a single character... That, that is a brand. I mean, they used to have Prince of Persia, but they fucked it up. They used to have Ezio Auditore, but they fucked it up. So now they genuinely don't have any, any female cat, no brand, right? And the second issue is that the higher up told them, uh, and this was like a conversation, unofficial, off the record. It's like, yeah, you know, we could get some actresses in order to, you know, do VTubing. But it would have to be corporate. It would have to be sanitized. And if it's sanitized and corporate, people won't watch it. They, they will still watch the Hololive stuff. So, like, the Hololive stuff, you got Amelia Watson, like, a girl that you can tell she's a gamer. She bashes the desk when she loses. She wants to ground pound your mom, and she makes uh, lewd jokes, and, and she curses and stuff. If you're working for Ubisoft, they wouldn't allow any of that. They would probably put like a transgender uh, VTuber that's there that says the most corporate things and the most sanitized things and the most political correct things. And uh, that's it. You know? And, and, and they would never manage to get up to one million views. And the thing is like the middle management knows this. Like the middle management within these companies are fully aware of the market. They're fully aware of what works and what doesn't. But the consultants wouldn't allow them. All right, they still have Rayman, but Rayman is not a woman, so. Amelia said she now respects moms. I haven't followed her. I I, I did follow the uh, Pecora arc. I think it's Pecora, right? Like the, the bunny girl. So there's this VTuber, which is a rabbit. And she invited her mom to a stream. And it turns out that people now like her mom more than her. 
And she's really upset. She's really butt hurt about this because now her mom is VTubing and her mom is now starting to leech subscribers off her daughter. And that's like a big oof, man. That's that's a big oof. Uh, everything is wholesome, though. Like, she's not a thought or anything. Like, they're just making wholesome content. And, and it's absolutely hilarious that the mother, which sounds like an elderly woman, I think, like, she's got the model with bigger boobs as well. Uh, the mother is now, like, leeching off the, the audience of her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, it was the April Fool stream. Yeah, yeah, like for April Fool, she invited her mother to to collab. But the people actually liked her a lot. And now now they, they want to do it some more. That's not what happened. She was just one for one stream. Yeah, but like Twitter is obsessed with her. Like I, I see people wanting her back. I see, I see people tweeting at Pecora, wanting the mother to come back. <laughs> and there's a lot of fan art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the response was that they want the mother to come back. <laughs> mother, daughter is a popular genre. Get the fuck out. No, no, please, please don't tell me that. Please, I refuse to believe it. I genuinely refuse to believe that that mother daughter is a popular genre. Uh, Peko Baba is your Oshi. <laughs> I haven't really follow, found any VTubers to follow consistently. Motherfucker, you're following me. None of them are really playing anything that I'd be interested to watch. But, like, there, there aren't any fucking video games. I used to play video games, but I'm thinking, like, what, what exactly am I going to play now? I'm going to play some DK eventually, but like, th there is no other game that I can see myself playing and having fun. A and the reality is that I'm playing old games and I am having fun. You know, maybe I should do a Nox Let's Play. Nox is a uh, hack and slash RPG. It's, it's really fun. I'll, I'll probably show you guys at some point. Um, <laughs> everyone wants Ara Ara. My God, I, I I wonder like how she feels about it. Like you bring your mother, and everyone is like, "Well, actually, your mother is more entertaining." I mean that that is a big oof. Uh, Hell Divers Two is good. I haven't really tried it. I I don't have the body to buy it yet because I'm investing gold by money into my video game, and I'm also saving for Stellar Blade. And I'm definitely going to to buy that one and see how it's like. So, until Stellar Blade comes out, I'm not buying any other game. Play Kenshi? I, I'm not sure what that game is. So I don't know. Hello, Agrajager. How's it going? No, the thing that I'm playing right now is uh, Dungeons and Dragons with Sargon, Rags, and, and Dev. Uh, I'm playing Nikkei. Uh, I'm going to play Stellar Blade, and I'm working on my game, and that's it. Like That's the only thing that I have time for. And I'm also doing the live streams and stuff. Oh, wait, 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 Kenshi, isn't that game where you can play as a human torso? I think I found videos on YouTube about it. Like, you, you can play as a character that doesn't have legs and arms. I see. I, I don't want to play, like, these niche games, man, uh, as well. It's it's just not really not my cup of tea. I, I don't like sandbox games. I, I like games where you have, like, a linear path. You know what I miss, actually? I, I do miss the arena shooters. I miss them a lot. I, I miss the first-person shooters. I, I really miss like the Half Life type of games, uh, the uh, the Doom type of games. Like they don't, they don't really make arena shooters anymore for some reason. I don't know why. Like, is it expensive to make or, or what what the reasoning is? But yeah, every, everything is like Assassin's Creed, isn't it? Like third person walk around simulators. Stream Bank Island too. Uh. No, I, I want to play an arena game, actually. I don't know what that would be, though. Like, what, what arena games... Um, hmm. I'm pretty sure if I look on Steam, I'll, I may find some pixelated shit that, that I may get into. 
Uh, my speed Rubik's Cube just came in the mail. No, that's a game. Ah. No, I don't like Call of Duty. I don't fucking like Call of Duty. Like, the modern military shooters, I never really liked them. I, I don't know why people love them so much. Like, every single fucking weapon feels the same. It's like another uh, full semi-automatic assault rifle, Ghost Gun of War. And, and, like, just the spread is a little bit different. But, but like, when, when you play that real, you know, you have, like, this weapon that uh, is a sniper rifle. You got the rocket launcher. You got this weapon is a shotgun. And, and this weapon is a machine gun. And this weapon, like, fires discs that ricochet off the walls. Like, I, I miss that. I fucking miss that, and every single weapon had, like, an alternative fire, like in Half-Life, for instance, right? Like, you got, every single weapon's got a, a, a secondary fire, and it's fun. Like, it, it's it's over the top, it's fun, like Doom as well, you know, Doom was also one that had that. But, like, Call of Duty, every single fucking gun looks the same. And every single level is the same. It's like, uh, nah, I don't like it. Yeah, modern FPS games feel the same. I miss the arena shooters. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, the arena shooters were great. Uh, Battlefield was awesome. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Battlefield was also another game where it's like, oh, look, there's 100 players on the map, and nothing you do makes you feel that you're doing any difference. The, the only thing good with Battlefield was if you were playing with friends. Like, if you're actually playing with a squad, and, and you're with, like, some friends, and they're all good at the game, then, yeah, I guess that would be fun. But I did that Battlefield, if you're just playing by yourself, was boring as fuck. I, I never got into it. You take that back. Battlefield 2042 is special. The mouse input doesn't work. The recoil is bugged. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Battlefield 2042. I, I, I remember like seeing the trailer for that, and I was wondering, why the fuck are they making this game? Like, nothing in it was even remotely interesting. I missed out on uh, Call of Duty MW2 in 2009, maybe. I don't know. The, the one where you play as the Russians in World War II, that one was great. Battlefield 1 was interesting. Mm. It wasn't a World War I game. That, like, that's really what pissed me off. Like I was expecting uh, Battlefield 1 to be like this um, video game w w where... Most weapons would be bolt action, so like reloading would take a lot of time and you gotta be very accurate with your bullets because you don't get many of them. And you just like fire one bullet and then you gotta hide and, and reload the gun. Uh, but the reality wasn't like that. Battlefield 1 was like no different than World War 2. Every single weapon was a full semi-automatic that CNN would be horrified of. And it's like just, just another average Battlefield shooter. With, with like a World War One skin. That's it. Oh yeah, Medal of Honor was was a game, yeah. I remember that. Hunt Showdown is actually pretty good, yeah. Anyway, uh I'll end it here. Uh when is Sunday? Today is Friday, right? So uh the day after tomorrow, I will do this weekend stupid again with my guest. And uh hopefully you guys uh, are going to enjoy that. Do they have a game version about Gaza? No, if they make a game version about Gaza, Steam will probably ban it or it will generate too much controversy. I think like they did a similar game where you get to play as the terrorists and, and people freaked out. So, no, it's it's too early. Too early to make a game about Gaza. Uh, but but actually, if I, if I notice, like, Call of Duty doesn't even make games about the Middle East anymore. So, there's that. Anyway, right. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.